Hi guys, before we get into the subject matter of the video, um, I just want to very quickly apologise for the fact I have a cold, so my voice is a little bit muffled, I'm going to try and talk over it. Um, also, apologies for the training moustache, uh, it's only had a week to grow in, so it's where it is. Uh, hopefully it'll look a bit better soon, but uh, you just have to put up with it for the moment. Anyway, what we're looking at today is a British, this isn't mine, this was lent to me by a friend of mine. It's a British issue, single-breasted greatcoat. Now, from uh, the introduction of, of khaki service dress uniform uh, through to 1939, British issue greatcoats were of single-breasted pattern. Uh, this is a 1930s example. Um, it, it basically follows, other than some minor changes to the cut, it basically follows uh, what will be seen mid First World War uh, in terms of economy. So prior to the First World War, the single-breasted greatcoats had had uh, a ticket pocket, I think on the right, uh, so a small pocket flap there, rifle patches on each shoulder, uh, and these features, uh, along with uh, turn back bucket cuffs, very similar to, to those which are on modern day uh, guards, grey single-breasted greatcoats. Um, all these features have been deleted for, for the purpose of economy. And this 1930s manufacturer essentially shows that design uh, with these features all removed. So you just have the two uh, hip pockets there. Um, obviously you have a hook, and a hook uh, an eye of the collar so you can hook that together. And you do have a piece underneath the collar there stitched on and a button on each side so you can button the collar up very similar to what would be seen on, on the uh, 1939 and 1940 pattern great coats um, that would replace this uh, during the Second World War. Um, as I say single breasted closure, uh, double breasted great coats give the advantage of having a double layer of cloth over the front, they're also arguably smarter um, but uh, obviously take more cloth so you do end up using more cloth making a double breasted design. We'll have a look at the back now, I'll turn this around on the mannequin, there we go, and you can see um, something that in 1939 when these were replaced with the, the initial double breasted design, the 1939 pattern, this bunched cloth in the rear was deleted. Um, the 1939 pattern doesn't have all this volume of cloth held together with the back belt, it's, it still has the back belt, it just doesn't have this uh, large amount of cloth. And this expansion area, this uh, pleat in the back, was intended so that it could, if necessary, be donned over the top of equipment and you could release the back belt, unbutton, unbutton the back belt, release that, and obviously then uh, it would open up. Similar to later designs, you have the two buttons in the uh, tails here, in the vent at the rear, if you can see that there. Uh, important thing to note about this great coat is it's a, a dismounted pattern, so for dismounted troops, those not uh, riding horses, so not just infantry, but obviously uh, supporting elements who also were, you know, weren't mounted, weren't in a mounted role. Um, you have the epaulettes, uh, as usual, uh, which would have borne shoulder titles. The, in fact, these we'll have a look at in a second. Uh, the detail you can see, these have had holes put in to, uh, to affix uh, brass um, or gilding metal uh, shoulder titles. So uh, I'll bring the camera in now and we can have a little bit of a look at some of the, uh, the details of this. So you can see here on the, the epaulettes that uh, they've been holed here uh, to take shoulder titles. Um, can have a look at the back belt here. You can see the small uh, general service buttons as on the epaulettes. Go back up. You can see there. And then down the front you have the standard. Oh, just sliding slightly down on the uh, mannequin there. The larger um, general service buttons at the front there. If we turn the collar up, we can show a detail of the collar piece there, which can be buttoned across using these two small horn buttons. Fasten that up, and you can see the stitching. Oh, slipped right down on the mannequin there, never mind. These aren't really designed for this weight of clothing, but uh, you see the stitching under the collar there. We move that all the way around. That detail there, you can see the detail of the stitching in the the, the pleat that's uh, here in the back of the uh, back of the great coat. So there we are. So we're going to have a look at the inside now, uh, and as you can see, um, it's partially lined. Uh, we have. Um, uh, an off-white wool lining over the shoulders, give a bit of extra warmth there, and then a cotton lining, which is a bit discoloured, but the cotton lining in the sleeves. <coughs> Excuse me, I do beg your pardon. Um, you can see at the front the, the wool is double thickness there, stitched down the front. 
um, down this seam here. Uh, you've got a drill reinforcing around the uh, pockets, which obviously are themselves made of khaki drill material. Let's turn this around again on the mannequin. And you can see here where this you've got this white inner wool lining around the shoulders uh, to give it a bit of extra warmth. And you can see the internals at the back here, the vent at the, uh, the bottom there, at the rear. Uh, you can also see on the sides here, the uh, there are actually slits here for the back belt um, and this reinforcing piece of drill uh, so the back belt can be if necessary pulled away and tucked away inside the coat so it's not just flapping around if you unbutton it it's possible to do that so if those slits are available there on each side one on each side there and there so uh, there it is uh, you do also have a hanging tab inside the collar here as you can see there um, and I'll just bring the camera in now kind of quickly for the, uh, the detail of the label I'll turn this back around again there we go. And here we have the label. Uh, as you can see, great coat dismounted. Size 7, height 5 foot 9, 5 foot 10, breast 38 to 40. And then you have the uh, manufacturer, which is uh, the Rego Clothiers Limited at the bottom there. So there it is. Just a quick look at this uh, pattern of great coat. Uh, these aren't particularly common to find these days, um, even though they were made right through until the start of the uh, Second World War. Um, so this is a very nice thing to be able to do a video on, as I say, it belongs to a friend of mine, David, who lent, lent it to me to do the uh, video on the 4th Field Company Royal Engineers um, on their entrance into Bickerath just after the end of the First World War as a pack filler, and I had it folded up in that video as it would have been to fit inside the pack. Uh, an interesting item to have a look at, as I say, uh, in contrast to the double-breasted greatcoats that came later on. Um, and as I say, other than small changes to the cut, uh, this is very much how uh, mid First World War manufactured greatcoats would have looked with all the various extra bits and pieces like the rifle patches and things removed uh, as a matter of economy. So uh, there we are. I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, bye for now.